What is going on, Chumas? Today, we're going to do the breakdown of Cyberpunk Edge Runners episode number two. And let's jump right into it. So first, we're going to talk about the fact that David comes into school the next day after having surgery and Dex and slaps this homeboy straight in the face. I enjoy this scene because I'm sure when everyone watched the first episode, they're like, yo, fuck this guy. This guy deserves to get slapped real hard. And David satisfies that craving right away by coming to school, using the sand devastan and just destroys him almost instantly. Now this leads to the Arasaka higher ups finding out about the fact that David can be or is able to tolerate high level military grade cyberware why is this important this is important because of the cyber skeleton program that they want to test out so that's where he becomes a interesting character for arisaka but other than that in episode two not much else is talked about with regards to arisaka's desires and wants for david martinez at the time so we'll leave it at that and we'll talk about this particular instance where arisaka is interested in david as the episodes build on that so the next big sequence is when David finally meets Lucy. What I enjoyed about the way they introduced this character is at this point, everyone knew that David and Lucy were going to hook up. They were going to get together because we saw in the trailer that they straight up kissed. So how to build on that and how to show that this relationship is more than just kind of a fling. I enjoyed the way the creative team and Studio Trigger did this because you kind of get a sense that Lucy, well, sorry, that David felt it's Lucy's present like he felt her presence more than anything like yeah it's always her hair and he always gets like this tingling sensation and yeah it may be cringy to some but you know that feeling when it's like oh that person is in the room and their presence is there you just feel it you maybe feel excited you maybe feel a little bit nervous and I think that's what they're trying to show with David he's always like in the first time he feels Lucy he's very excited he's like oh my god I gotta go see this girl and then you know she's obviously not there anymore but now here when she sees when he sees her in the train he has that same emotion where it's like oh my god who is this person right like so I like the way they built that up because we knew they were gonna get involved it's just a matter of how they built that up and I like that the way they did it was kind of like this feeling um, sensation that David has so it was very enjoyable to see that and yes I know very cringy but still very anime and I enjoyed it some more things to add with regards to the sequence is the way Lucy actually straight up finds information about David so I don't know if this is a quick hacking skill or the fact that she's a net runner but when we scan in the game yes we can find out who these characters are affiliated to we can find out what their names are we can find out like you know what cyberware they have on and all that stuff but for her to find enough information on David to know that he was an Arasaka Academy student is different she was able to see that he was in trouble. She was able to see all those details about him. Now that, I don't know how much they can build on that in the game because I'm, I'm thinking of it this way. What if there's a character in the game where your mission is to like, I don't know, let's say kill this guy. And so you go into the gig and then instead of killing this guy, you have the option to tell him, hey, it looks like, you know, you owe somebody some money. And depending maybe on your skill tree, you give him the money and then he becomes an ally, a friend, or he gives you a weapon or a secret, I don't know, clothing, something you may not have gotten otherwise, but you would only know this if you were able to like maybe quick hack or scan him and find the information, again, based on skill tree. So maybe if your breach protocol or your quick hacking was high enough, you can kind of look and dig a little bit more into his past and then talk to him. The next thing about her having him in a stranglehold is the monowire around his neck. Yes, this is a very simple detail. However, if you think about it, what if this is something they add in the game? Where let's say instead of a monowire, you have a mantis blade or even the gorilla arms where each kill stealth wise has a different animation based on the cyberware you have on. So, you know, with the monowire, we just add on to what Lucy did is, you know, she just squeeze or whatever it is she does with the monowire to literally shred David's neck. So that would be fun to see in a sequel or maybe in the DLC because they did show off a little bit of the monowire again in the DLC. So maybe there's some upgrades when it comes to the cyberware, but still fun fact and fun thing to look at and look forward to as a possibility. Okay. And one of my favorite parts in this entire episode is the ironic part where David is in the ambulance and then that ambulance or paramedic puts a gun to his head saying that, hey, I'm going to sell your body parts to like the scabs. I love this because it's a full circle of what happened 
to David. His mom did this for Lieutenant Colonel James Norris. He, well, I mean, the guy was, you know, dead, but still, she took advantage of the situation, took his cyberware, and was going to give it or sell it off to Maine. That is still, I, I, I say this is ironic because now we have an instance where another paramedic who may be living just a heart of life as uh, Gloria and David were, but you see how the perspective of everyone is different because David, of course, is the main character. We know he's not going to die here, but the fact remains that that paramedic may have needed this to just put food on the table to pay for rent. And so it, these kind of parts, like even though they're tiny in the grand scheme of the anime, makes you wonder just how crazy Night City is that people are straight up turning on one another to just make more money. Well, okay, not make more money, not make more money, but to meet and no, to make ends meet. And that's sad and I and just again ironic all at the same time. So I enjoy that. I enjoy that part of the storytelling. And I, I've said this so many times. If you guys have not read the comic book Trauma Team, that puts you in a whole nother perspective about Trauma Team. When I play the game, I literally just think of Trauma Team as a-holes because of the fact of, or the way they treat you in the Sanders Dorset mission. But if you guys read that comic, you'll see just kind of how crazy the world Trauma Team people have to go into. And I loved it because yes, it's called Trauma Team, but the main character also goes through some sort of mental trauma. So again, I encourage you guys to go read it and I'll probably do some episodes on that because it was really, really good. Anyways, my point here is that the ironic thing has come full circle where now David, the one with this military gray cyberware is, you know, under hostage because of the fact that he has it, but he would not be in the situation had his mom not done something similar where she stole the cyberware in the first place. And then of course we get the fan service we all needed. We get some Lucy going crazy and being super kawaii. And uh, it's just fun to see that Lucy is not the type of character who would sit back and kind of go, yes, you are absolutely correct. She decided to use David's gurney. I think that's what it's called. Pushes it out of the ambulance and says, you know what? Yes, we're going to go down a trip down this hill using your gurney, boy. And we're going to live. So fan service moment, very anime moment. And again, just gives you a little bit more insight about how Lucy is as a character. Love it. Now, of course, we cannot complete this episode without talking about the moon BD. This sequence to me, this whole thing was again a perfect mashup and buildup of the type of character Lucy is, the type of character David is. David is a trusting character because look, he met this girl today because of his gut feeling he is in her apartment listening to any story she says. This is how he gets caught, of course, we find out at the end of the episode, but still, we find out that he's that main gullible kind of character who trusts you because of how he feels about you yes and although some people will be like yo that's so stupid there are people like that there are people who just trust until they can no longer trust you that's why he's so upset when you know he felt betrayed um and again we'll talk about that in a later episode so that tells us a little bit more about david lucy on the other hand it it shows that she wants to trust this guy but thinks that this may be too good to be true and this leads and segues perfectly into the moon bd because we know this links to the moon tarot card so i'm going to read the moon tarot card that way you guys understand where i'm coming from the moon reminds us that reality is not always what it seems at first glance. In a world of appearances and illusions, the best course is often charted by one's own intuition. The moon is also the card of dreams, desires, and of course, sleep, death's nightly ritual. So there's so much to unpack from the tarot card. And now because we've watched the anime, we can kind of connect the dots here. So the first thing I want to talk about is that the moon reminds us of reality uh, is not always what it seems at first glance. So I think this is a little bit about Lucy being a little bit more, how do I say this, a uh, secretive because Yes, she may think that David is trustworthy, but she's holding back. She doesn't show her true emotions until later on when she straight up makes out with him. But you can tell she's weary. She's she's kind of concerned. She's kind of like, okay, I like this guy. This guy seems like a fun guy. This guy seems like a great guy. 
but can I trust him? Right. So that that's, I think, what it is where, you know, in a world of appearances and illusions, the best course is often charted by one's own intuition. And so her intuition is telling her, you know, uh, maybe at this moment, it's like, oh, it feels great to be around this guy. It feels great to be around this person. But I don't know if I can trust them. This this whole idea of her being careful, I think, has to do a little bit with the tarot card and how the developers, not the developers, sorry, the writer and creative team wanted to write her character. And then, of course, the full contained story about the moon is also the card of dreams, desires. Just makes sense. Her dream is to go to the moon. So the moon tarot card starts or the moon tarot card stands for dreams and desires. So it's kind of a full contained uh, story there. But before ending it there, let's actually talk about the sun tarot card, because I think this has a lot to do with David in general. The fact that he's talking about how the sun feels so warm, how it feels so bright. So I'm going to read the sun tarot card for you guys as well. The sun symbolizes success. It is a card of freedom, renewal, and a bright future that lies ahead. The sun also represents truth, for its light will always pull back the curtain of the shadow that hides the world's secrets. It is also it also represents greatness and splendor. This is like just just like everything that's polar opposites, the moon, the sun. I love that line where it says the light will always pull back the curtain of shadow that hides the world's secrets. Although it may not be the world's secrets, I think that the sun you know, tarot card talks about how David was able to pull back all of Lucy's secrets by the end of the anime. Yes, she tells him his story in episode seven about how she was in an Arasaka facility and she ran away and all that fun stuff. So she exposes all that or she shows who she really is. And if David wasn't so associated with the Sun tarot card. I don't think that she would have been so willing to open up. So I think in my head canon, that's what I'm thinking about, you know, world secrets and all that. And also the fact that David was close to exposing a little bit of Arasaka. And, you know, that's also another thing linked to the fact that the Sun symbolizes success. David eventually gets his end goal. His end goal is to make sure that Lucy is protected. This is kind of brought up a little bit later as the story progresses, especially when their, you know, their relationship evolves. But his main goal was just to protect her. If you notice in the fight with Adam Smasher, he's not really doing anything. He's just making sure he stays alive for Lucy and Falco to get out of there. So that's it. He feels that he's done everything he's needed to do. He's got his girl out of there. She's able to go to the moon with the eddies that, you know, he gave her and Falco. So Yes, he is now successful. He's now accomplished everything he needed. And it's just fun to see that he is the one talking about how the sun feels so warm. It feels so bright. It's cool and it's great to see all that. So yeah, the sun tarot overall literally just symbolizes, I think, David's personality. And it talks about who he is and what he wants to do with regards to how he wants to be uh, as a person within Night City, which is admirable, fun. And yes, although it is very like shown in and very basic when it regards to how he, his character progresses and all that, it's still shown in esque within Night City, where the reality is he's not going to make it. And we all know that. And yeah, that's going to do it for me in this breakdown. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. I kind of talked a, a little bit off when it comes to emotions and feelings and all that. But I think as I've seen the anime a little bit more and understood why it's so great, it has to do with these little tiny details and all these little, I guess, like um, connections that we may have just been like, oh, that's cringy. But at the same time, it, it makes you feel good. It makes you feel like the story is built on these types of emotions. And I, that's why I enjoy the moon and the sun tarot because it, it exemplifies both the personalities of Lucy and David so well and just tells a story from that point onwards. If you see every decision they make, it has to do with kind of the tarot cards. This is this is a little bit like astrology, but you know, you know what I'm saying. Anyways, Chumas, that's gonna do it for me in this episode. Make sure to add a smash that like and share button for more cyberpunk content. I will see you edge runners in the next one. Bye.